Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on house robber. And in the problem, you're a professional robber robbing houses along the street. Each house has a certain amount of money stashed. And the only constraint stopping you from robbing each of them is adjacent houses cannot be robbed. So if you rob one, you can't rob houses next to it. Given an array nums representing the amount of money of each house represent the maximum amount of money you can rob tonight without alerting the police. So in this first example, you can rob house one and you can rob house three, so you'll get a total of four, and you can't get more than that. In the second example, you can rob house one, you can rob house three, and then house five, and you will get a total of 12, and you can't get more than that. So let's kind of show this um, with kind of like a brute force picture of all the th decisions we can make, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at house zero, and then we're gonna show the decisions of robbing it or not robbing it, and then see if we can learn anything from that. So we're gonna start with house zero, and the left option will be don't rob it, the right option will be rob it, and then on the path will give the value of robbing it. Also notice if you rob house zero, you can't rob house one. So if we rob house zero, we will go straight to house two. And if we don't rob house zero, then we can go to house one, right? So remember left will be um, don't rob and right will be rob. So if we don't rob, we will be at house one with a nothing here. And if we do rob, we will go to house two and we robbed from house zero. So we got a total of two here. Okay. Now from house one, same kind of thing. So if we don't rob, we will go to house two. If we do rob, we will go to house uh, three and we get the value of robbing the house. So we'll get seven. And let's actually just fill out this whole left side. So this is basically just don't rob anything and then get the house four, right? So this is gonna be house three, house four. And then at house four, we should obviously like always rob it, right? At that point, because like there's nothing past it. So if we're there, we will rob it and we'll get its value of one. So we'll just say this is value one. And we don't rob anything else here. So now let's, fit, let's fill out kind of the rest of it left to right. So two, or let's actually fill out this part. So from house two, we, chose not to rob it left. What if we do rob? If we do rob, we will go to house four. And the value of robbing house two is nine. And the value of robbing house four is one. And then we're done there. Three, if we do rob it, then we can't rob house four. So we will basically just be done. So this right side, we won't be anywhere, right? We'll be just like out of bounds, but we do rob house three. So let, let's get that value. So we get three here. Okay, um, and let's fill out this again. So we can either not rob house three, get to house four, we will always rob house four with a value one, or we can rob house three and it'll be kind of like the same thing. So we'll get a value three, there's no, there's no more houses here. So notice that these chunks are the same. Like we can, like this decision from house two is the same as this decision from house two. So we can actually just even take a shortcut where we can take all of this and copy it and paste it in right here. Now we can, we're gonna make it a little smaller so it'll fit, but get the idea. It's the same exact thing, right? So anytime we're at a house, the decisions are the same no matter where we got here. So if we got to house two from house zero, it's gonna be the same result from here onward. And if we got to house two from house one, it's gonna be the same result. So you see all these like repeated chunks, right? Like this whole thing is repeated. So when you notice that there's a lot of these repeated segments, same thing here, right? This segment over here and the segment over here is repeated. Basically that means that we're gonna wanna cache our results to our function, right? So whenever we get to three, we're gonna calculate some value. And then when we get there again, we're just gonna use that cache. So that's kind of how we're gonna do it. So this is gonna be a dynamic programming problem. And you can see that from this tree, when you have, when you have cases where you can either like take or don't take something, that's a really common dynamic programming problem. And you can see there's gonna be a lot of repeated work, so you're gonna to wanna to cache it. So so this repeated work is solved in O1. For example, like we'll solve the value at this index, and then when we get to it again, we can just get it in O1. So what do we need for dynamic programming? We need three things. We need state, recursive case, or base case, and recursive. And so for the state, 
you want to minimize your state because in your cache, your dimensions of your cache are going to be based on all the total states you can be at. So you want to minimize this. So the state for this is pretty easy. It's just going to be the in, like the house we are at, right? Kind of like in this picture. All we need to know is the house we're at, and then we just choose rob it or don't rob it. Base case is also pretty easy. Out of bounds, we want to return zero here because there's nothing left to rob, right? Like that's basically this situation here. If we rob house four, we're out of bounds. If we rob house three, we're out of bounds, all of these. Um, and recursive case is pretty easy as well. So it's just value of, or it's gonna be the maximum of two choices, right? So the maximum of choice one, rob current house, then recurse two houses down, or B, skip current house and recurse one house down kind of like in this picture right so the left is don't rob we recurse one house down and the right is rob and then the biggest so i, I actually didn't show this but the biggest value is basically going to be if you go down all of these paths what's going to be the biggest result so if we look this should be 12 so let's find something that's 12 so this path is 12 right here right two nine one so if we rob house zero house two and house four and let's see if that was the answer. So these are one index, so one, one, three, and five. So same thing, because those are one index, these are zero indexed. So this is gonna be like the best path here. And this will give us a value of 12. Maybe there's some other paths that give us the same exact value, but I'm not seeing it. Seven, three, we can also get nine. Yeah, I think this is just the best. But that's kind of the essential thing for um, dynamic programming is you basically figure out, hey, I'm recursing states rely on each other and this is a common common one where uh you have the option of to take something or not take it and then recurse appropriately so we can code that and it's going to be a pretty straightforward code so we can make a cache we can make a dp function it's just going to take an index if our index is greater than or equal to length nums the reason i'm going to make it less than or greater than or equal to length nums is because let's say we are at this index over here and we take it, we will recurse twice. So then we will be like two past it. So either way, whenever we're, whenever we're past this array, there's nothing else to rob, so we'll just return zero. So here we return zero, then we have our cache case. So if index in cache, return cache index. Otherwise, basically we have two choices, right? So we can cache the result of the minimum of um, nums index plus recurring two houses down. So this is just gonna be dp index plus two or not taking it and just recurring one index down. So like this, and then we just return this value. And finally, we need to call this function on index zero. And we can do that. Um, and it looks like I did something wrong. Um, let's take a look. So cache, if index is greater than or equal to length nums, return zero. If index and cache, return cache. Cache index equals min nums index. Plus dp index is two. Okay, and let's see what we're getting here. So we are getting zero. So that means we're not like actually, oh, it's, I, I, I did this a lot. So we actually want the max. And I think I wrote this wrong in my um, problem as well. So we actually, yeah, we did write the max. Okay. So we want the maximum of these two, not the minimum. So there we go. All right. We want the most we can rob, not the least. So there we go. Now that's top down. Now bottom up, you can also do the same thing. And bottom up is pretty easy. So let's actually show bottom up. So top down, we started at zero and then we got to a base case and we were cursed. With bottom up, you basically do a similar thing, except now instead of starting at, well, let's actually change these values. Instead of starting at zero, we're gonna start at the base case. So our base case is basically we are out of bounds. So we're gonna make all these values zero and we can just have an out of bounds. So the easiest way to do this this way is gonna be basically we are past this array. So when we're past this array with these values being five and six, these will be zero, right? So this is gonna be our base case. These two are our base cases. 
And now we will fill it out starting at the last house, right? So let's fill it out starting at the last house and you'll see kind of how this works. So at the last house, you have the option of robbing or not robbing. If you do rob, then you get to rob the house two down. And if you don't rob, then you get to rob the house one down. So if we do rob, we will get one plus the value over here, which is zero. And if we don't rob, we will get zero plus this value here, which is zero. So we do want to rob, so we'll get one here. Now at this house, same thing. If we do rob, we will get this value plus the value at two houses down, which is zero, so three plus zero. And if we don't rob, we will get one, so three is bigger. Then here, same thing. If we do rob, we will get the value for the house, which is nine, plus the value of the house two down, so nine plus one, which is 10. And if we don't rob, then we can just go to this house, which is three, so 10 is better. Then here, we if we do rob, we will get seven plus the value of the house two down, which is three, so we get 10. And if we don't rob, then we will get 10 as well, so 10 and 10. And finally, for the last one, if we do rob, we will get two plus the value of the house two down, which is 12 total. And if we don't rob, we will get the value of the house one down. And now you can just return this number over here, and this should be the same ideally, so it is. So that's kind of how you do bottom up. You start with the base case, and then you just go backwards to your solution. And now the thing that you can also recognize is each of these houses only depends on the two houses, two houses down, right? So like this house depends on this house and this house. Similarly, this house depends on this house and this house and so on. So if every house only depends on the two houses down, instead of actually having an array, we can just store two variables. So yes, you can code this up with an array, but you can basically just store two variables. And let me show you what that's gonna look like. So we're just gonna store two variables here and we can call this first and last. So first zero, last zero. And this is basically gonna represent our base cases, right? So first will be the value at index five and last will be the value at index six. Then we can recurse backwards same way and we can just update these two numbers. So I'm actually gonna, it's easier gonna be to draw as an array of two numbers, so zero and zero. And then basically this number is gonna, this is gonna be the house after it, and this is gonna be the house two houses after it. And we're just gonna update in place this array of two numbers. So for four, if we do rob four, we will get, we basically have to figure out like what's the value for four. So for four, it's gonna be either rob plus zero, which is the one two down, or don't rob and this one, which is the one one down. So the best value is gonna be one, right? So for four, the value is gonna be one. And now let's actually draw this a little bit differently. So basically we're gonna have an array and we're gonna move it. I think that's gonna be easier to visualize. So let's actually, uh, yeah, let's do that. So let's take this ideally, let's see here. Okay, delete all this. Now, there we go. So this base case was at indices five and six, right? Now we got the value at four, so we can actually delete this. Like this was these two, this is the, this is the ones we're gonna be storing. We got the value at four, right? And it's gonna be one because we always wanna store, we always wanna rob at one. So now this value at four will go over here, oops. This value of four will go over here and this value will be the old value that was on the left. So in, the, in this case it was zero, so it doesn't really matter. So we're gonna move it like this. And we're, now we're at three. So now at three, we can either take three. And if we take three, then we will go two houses down. And remember, this is the old value. This is what we calculated for four. So two houses down is gonna be over here. And then one house down is gonna be over here. So if we do take three, um, yeah, if we do take three, th like the, the better value will be taking three and then taking the zero, it's three plus zero or one. So we do wanna just take the three. So for three, we get a value of three. Now, like I said, this value is gonna be the old, this value here. So this will just be, oops, this will just be one. And now this will be three. Oh, I can't die. Okay, let me do that kind of annoying not letting me okay let's uh there we go let's get rid of this 
Okay, there we go. So basically we're gonna have a three here. And now this is the DP values for three and four. So we're gonna move this like this. And now we're calculating two. So we can either take the value in two and the value two houses down, which is this value that we calculated here, or we can skip it. So obviously the better one is gonna to be to take it. So if we take it plus this, it's gonna be 10. So remember this gets updated to the value that was in here. So this is gonna be three and this is going to be 10. Then we will shift it again. So oops, let's move this whole thing. Ugh. Okay, there we go. Let's move this whole thing. Um, not quite like that. It's gonna be like this, but let's actually move it over here. So it's easier, okay. So now for one, we need to basically either take one and take this or skip one and take this. Same thing either way, right? So it's just gonna be 10 for value one. So 10, so remember this, this takes the old value that's in here and this is gonna be 10 because one is 10. So now we can shift this over here. And finally for zero, if we take it, we will take this 10 and if we don't take it, we'll take this 10. So it's better to take it and take this 10 so we get a 12. So same thing again, this is gonna take the old value of the 10 which is already there and this is a 12. So essentially, because every value only relies on the two values after it, we're just storing two values and we're updating them in place and iterating backwards to get a solution. And now our solution is this, and we have two values instead of a whole array. So we can code that one as well, and it should be more efficient. So we can comment this out and say, we can make this like first and last, we'll make them both zero. And we will loop from the last number in nums all the way back to the beginning. So we'll say four i in range length nums minus one, minus one, minus one. And the reason, like I said, I started with these two values that were out of bounds is because I want to make sure that when I go one and two down, I don't want to be like out of bounds. So that's going to be the easiest way. You, you can do this another way, um, it, but it's going to be all the same. So basically we have to loop this until it gets all the way to the beginning. So the way this is gonna work is like I said, first, last, we can update them in place in Python. So last is gonna take the old value of first and first will take the value of, it's gonna be the minimum of these two things, right? So first will be the minimum of nums i. So if we rob the house and if we rob the house, then it will be plus last, right? Because last is the house two houses down of our current house. So if we rob the house, it'll be this. And if we don't rob the house, it will be first. Uh, yeah, so that's what first will get updated to and last will get updated to the old value of first So we basically do this and then first will be the DP value at index zero and that's what we want to return So we can just say return first And let's try that Not that uh, Apparently we did it wrong. So let's see. Oh Once again, I wrote min instead of max so max and there we go. So you can see it's um it's more efficient space-wise because now you have o, o of one space. So this is O of n space or O of n time, and this is O of one space. But this one, so this DP, um, let's go through it a little bit in depth of time and space. So basically what's gonna happen for DP because you're caching, you will only calculate the value for each index once. And so you basically, if you wanna figure out the time complexity of a DP function, you look how many states do you have and then how long is each actual function call. So each function call is constant time because this recursive call will be O of one because we're only calculating this once. So essentially this this is one, one operation, one operation, two operations, and that's it. So the actual inner call is O of one and there are only um, index states. So this is just O of n. But because we have a cache, the space is O of n in this one, because we're gonna be storing the result for every single index. Where here, we're only storing two variables and we're just updating them in place. So this is called um, space optimized bottom up and this is called top down. And I'd say if you're first learning DP, you can just focus on top down. I think it's um, a lot easier. And then once you're comfortable with it, then you can start doing bottom up if you want to. But it's not super necessary, so up to you. Um, and yeah, it's definitely a super core problem. I think it's really common when people ask, you can see. Um, so definitely one you want to know, and this is a good one to start with dynamic programming. 
Um, and yeah, make sure you understand it. Uh, and if you have any questions, just write it in the comments. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.